Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So today we are going to do lead code by weekly third question, frog jump to. So let us first read this question, then constraint, then finally intuition and the coding part for the same. So here you are given a zero index integer array stones sorted in strictly increasing order, representing the positions of stones in a river. So basically whatever is given to us, it is in increasing order. And that is also strictly increasing. That simply means that no duplicates would be there. A frog initially on the first stone wants to travel to the last stone and then return to the first stone. So basically here, frog wanna go till the last and then from that last, it want to go back again to the starting point. So that's it there. However, it can just jump to any stone at most once. So whatever path it would have taken from the first stone towards the last stone and whichever stones the frog would have stepped, those stones uh, that frog can't use when he would be getting back to the first stone. So that's the thing which we are required to check that how we can implement the same. And then the length of a jump is absolute different between the position of the stone the frog is currently on and the position of the stone to which frog jumps. So basically the length of a, a one jump would be completely equal to at whatever stone it just stepped now and the stone it was at before whatever difference would be there that would be the length of that jump. So more firmly if a frog is at stone I and is jumping to stone J then the absolute difference between the two stones, that would be the jump length. And the cost of a path is maximum length of a path among all the jumps in the path. So basically, when frog is at this point and it want to jump to this particular seven, so in this particular path only, whatever jump frog would have taken, so out of the whatever maximum length jump would be there, that is the maximum length of a jump. Uh, that is basically the cost of the, that is what we are required to an actual return. And then here return the minimum cost of a path for the frog. Means out of all these jumps which frog will be making, whatever it has uh, got as the maximum, means although we are required to return the minimum cost of a path for the frog, that simply means that out of all these paths uh, which it will be covering, we are required to return the maximum jump which is uh, basically there. Means the uh, cost of a path is the maximum length of a jump, right? Among all the jumps, that's the cost. And we are required to return the minimum cost. Means, uh, see, from this particular 0 to 7, it could have jumped from the 0 to 7 directly as well. But that would be the maximum jump, right? But it can cover this particular path in such a manner like it could jump to 5 and then to 6 and then to 7. Then here length is 1, 1 and this 5. That is the maximum length. But when it cross back, then also here we can check it is having the maximum length of jump that is 5. Out, uh, out of all uh, both of these two and five and it is also covering that condition of that it is not stepping to that stone which uh, frog has stepped before while covering the path towards the this last stone right so that's why in all this manner we are required to cover up that path where all these stones are jumped at most uh, mean at guess at most one and in that jumping process also we are required to check so whatever the maximum length of jump is there, that that is the one which we are required to return here so here in this first example we can see that frog jump to this path means from zero to five rather than jumping directly to seven and then uh one by one it jumped and then after that it jumped to two and then Again to two. So here the fi above figure represents one of the optimal paths frog can take. The cost of this path is five, which is maximum length of a jump. Since it is not possible to achieve a cost of 
less than five, we return it. Because out of all these jumps, this is the only jump which is the maximum out of all these, and that is the cost which we are required to return. And then in this second example here, we can see that three stones are there, right? So frog can directly jump to the last stone, and being at this position, it directly jumps to the first. So that is how it is jumping here. The frog can jump directly to the last one, come back to the first one. And in this case, the length of each jump will be 9. The cost for the path will be a maximum of 9,9, .9, right? And it can be shown that this is a minimum achievable cost in this particular. So now here, as per the constraint, we can see that 10 raised to power 5 is a constraint. So order of n or n log n solution would be possible here. And the each path it means each stone is having up to 10 raised to power 9 value and then stone 0 is equal to 0 only it will be always like that and stones are strictly increasing order so now as per this only we uh, one of the solution which work we can go ahead with the same it's like um you can take one unordered map and then maximum variable here. And for the same that for, this is for the part for going from uh, starting towards the end means going towards the uh, means going in rightmost direction means from the source to the destination at the uh, one go. So what we are doing here, we are directly checking for the alternate stones and we are marking them and checking that what is out of the maximum we are getting so that we are storing in this max variable and then this is for that part which will help us to check when we are getting back to our source so here whatever was being uh, used in this uh, going from the source to destination other than that whatever are being left for so all those we will be storing in this alt vect and then here, out of all means all the elements which are being stored in that all vector, we will be checking that what is the absolute difference between uh, those stones. Means what is the maximum jump which could be obtained out of them. And out of uh, means because of this only we will be able to check that when we were going from source to destination, whatever was the maximum jump. And when we were going from destination towards the source again. Then out of them, whatever maximum jump was there, we will be checking because of uh, both of these. And then at the end, we can return the max. So this is one of the possible solution we can go ahead. And it also got descripted. And the time complexity for the same is, here we can see it is order of n here, order of n here and order of n here, right? And under order map, it is order of one only. And looking up in the same, that is also order of one. So overall time complexity here is order of n. But here as we are using the one is the vector and one is unordered map. So that's why space complexity becomes order of n. So basically, the solution could be optimized more as per the part of the space complexity. So this is one of the approach for this particular question. If you have any doubt for the same, you could comment that down. So this was all for this particular video. And one more information, uh, as you are already solving lead code bi-weekly and weekly challenges, you can also try with the uh, Newton School Coding Contest about which you can figure out about all the details in the, uh, in the link, which is being provided in the description below. So yeah. This was all for this particular video. So, thank you.